This is Trevor Coppola for Anthony J. Hilder. I'm with uh, Deborah Tavares, and we're going to discuss a few topics here. Thank you so much for the interview. I appreciate the opportunity. Um, some of, one of the things that we want to talk about is what we were discussing a little bit ago, and that is the significance of this NASA war document that was found on the NASA website and the need to urgently get this out in front as, of many, as many people as possible because of the content of this document. So was this document available to everyone, or this was on their actual website and someone found it? That is correct. It was on the NASA website, and uh, it was a document that actually is a PowerPoint presentation by Dennis Bushnell, the chief NASA scientist at the Langley Center. And it was presented in 2001, July of 2001, just a few months before 9-11. And um, what brought my attention to it and immediately rang some uh, uncomfortable realizations was when, I first, when we first came across it, it says on the website, Future Strategic Issues future warfare circa 2025. And uh, as I decided to just flip through it quickly to see what it was about, I was a little stunned on page four. It said, the presentation is based in all cases upon existing data, trends, analysis, technologies, no pixie dust. And the entire premise of the document or the PowerPoint is about robots, cyborgs, and humans. So I immediately saw um, a conflict between future and now. And I thought, what are they covering up? Because that was a definite cover-up. And then I started to continue looking through the document with shock. And that's why we're talking right now. Because I think most people would be shocked to find on page 93... So, so who wrote this NASA document, and was this intentional? Did they want the public to see this, do you think? or? Well, again, uh, the Illuminati, the most wealthy, rich men on the face of the planet, always telegraph everything that they're going to do. So the fact that it was on the NASA website, it was certainly available to the public. But did they see it? Obviously not. Because had they looked at this document, you would know about it right now, and we don't. And that's the purpose of this discussion, is for people to know about this document. Uh, again, the conflict between the future and the fact that they said it was a current reality in 2001 of July when this was actually presented. And what it said, which was quite shocking, on page 93, it said, capture, torture Americans in living color on prime time. And that is an unbelievable statement. Then it's followed up by saying terror attacks within the continental United States using binary biologicals take down critical infrastructure. They are going to use an EMP, which is an electromagnetic pulse. They're going to use um, radiation frequencies against our brains, etc. And conduct serious psi war and collateral damage and exploitation. On this same page 93, they say exploit CNN syndrome. Now CNN, of course, is the network, the news media network, propaganda machine, and was set up by the CIA. You can watch the movie called Psy War on stopthecrime.net for all the background information on CNN. Very, very interesting uh, information. Uh, then you go on and you read that um, on page 66, they say increasingly critical are human limitations and human downsides. Humans are too large. Humans are too heavy, too tender. Humans are too slow, both physically and mentally. And we require huge logistical trains, meaning we cost way too much money to maintain. And humans have rapidly decreasing to negative value. Can you even believe this? I mean, you're hearing this, and it's got to be rather shocking coming off of a NASA website, particularly 
when some of the agencies that are involved are the U.S. Air Force, DARPA, the CIA, the FBI, Southern Command, Atlantic Command, Australian Department of Defense, and other agencies. This is the corporation's agencies. We are USA, Inc. We're no longer under a constitution, as proclaimed in the Iron Mountain Report, which everyone should read. On StopTheCrime.net, you can download it not only as the document, but you can watch the uh, documentary, which I highly recommend. You will see how the uh, stealth and deceptive incrementally positioned uh, attacks upon the Constitution have rendered us now a corporation. And we, do no, we no longer have a legitimate government. We are uh, uh, being or controlled by, or by um, corporations and banks that are posing as a legitimate government, and they're not. We wouldn't have a legitimate government with the war machine stating what they were going to do on the continental United States to all the people. And this is not just in the United States. This is a global planned attack and assault with technologies beyond most people's comprehension. Everyone is, is buying books and ammunition, I mean guns and ammunition, and they don't realize that the beam weapons, for example, on page 45, beam weapons increasingly prevalent. This is how they're going to attack. Uh, they talk also about, um, on page 9, this is very interesting and horrifying. <laughs> Humans have taken over and vastly shortened evolution. They're going to direct evolution. They believe, the they, the bankers, the global elites, believe that they have accomplished immortality. And they're doing that, again, keeping in mind that this entire document is about robots, cyborgs, and humans. They've already mapped our brains. We've just recently heard that they can um, transfer a human brain into machinery. So whenever they tell us that this is a new scientific discovery, we know it's been uh, decades and decades prior to us ever finding out about these things. And uh, they also talk about um, microdust as a weapon. They say that this micron-sized mechanized dust, which is distributed as an aerosol and inhaled into the lungs, the dust mechanically bores into the lung tissue and executes various pathological missions. They say it's a completely new type of warfare, and it is legal. It's legal. This is what they're going to do to all the humans on the face of this planet. It's all legal. And then they talk about how um, the use of frequencies will be used in warfare. And we know, for example, the smart meters that are being deployed around the globe, the replacement of our electric meters, which will also and does include the replacement of all of our gas meters, and our water meters as well, mm -hmm. and will be connected to our food supply when they collapse the occurrency and they issue energy um, allowances, and that will all be controlled through the metering system. But they talk about the use of low frequencies, microwave frequencies, and they mention in this NASA document the U.S. Army report. The U.S. Army report is on our website um, smartmetersmurder.com. It's about a 20-page uh, Army document that talks about the use of frequencies to target uh, the enemy. We're the enemy. And they say 100% of the human population will be affected by these frequencies. Some will uh, be the canaries in the coal mine, which is a uh, a term that they've been using as people have been dropping like flies. Uh, people are experiencing all kinds of health maladies. Uh, generally, it starts with ringing of the ears, heart palpitations, skin rashes, inability to sleep through the night. And what they're doing is they're jamming our immune systems with these frequencies. So how do the elite shield themselves from their own weapons? 
Well, that's a really good question. Um, and some of the uh, information that we've come across is, of course, they have methods far ahead of anything that we uh, have available to ourselves, such as cancer cures. They don't get cancer. Uh, there's chip mechanisms that we understand can fend off certain frequency attacks. Uh, we also know that they're interested in transhumanism. So much of what they're doing globally, they're interested in. And to what extent uh, they're uh, affected by all of the um, chemtrails and all of the nanofibers that are uh, being dropped, which is phase one of mm -hmm. the first protocol. Uh, it all lines up. Everything lines up. You connect the dots. You see the NASA war document. Uh, not only does it talk about the um, effects of frequencies and how it will be used, they acknowledge that it will interfere with our performance, that it will cause seizures. They acknowledge this in this document. It is no longer a debate about smart meters. We don't need any more scientists or doctors saying people are getting sick. This is the intention. So we have to stop looking at for more verifiable proof that people are becoming sick. This is the goal. This is the absolute goal. It's incarceration, it is enslavement, and it is depopulation, and it is massive mind control. The frequencies have multiple purposes. What do you think the solution is to all of this, this multi-level attack that's been going on for a very long time? Well, I think the solution is that people need to become educated as rapidly as possible. And there are documents that are, uh, for example, the Silent Weapons Quiet Wars document. It's a 41-page document. It's uh, on our website. This lays out, it's an operations research and technical manual. This, uh, this document was uh, the 1954, build, a 1954 Bilderberg policy at the first Bilderberg meeting. And this laid out the strategy to control the human population. And again, I can't stress enough that everyone should read this because they talk about how... Um, they, they talk about that this document should not be released to the people because it is a declaration of war. You can't keep fighting fires. You have to go after the arsonists. And that's what you're pointing out is the people that are responsible. And everything we see out there, what they're spraying and, and why are they spraying, nobody's talking about the conspiracy itself. This is a war against the people. And this you've got a hold of those specific people. And that's why that's valuable. They're killing us. That's exactly right. And this is, their, this is their war plan. This is the war plan. So we have to go to the war plan. This is only 41 pages. You take out the diagrams and you've got 36 pages. And it's not hard to read. They say that it's, uh, uh, the silent weapon uh, technology has evolved from operations research, a strategic and tactical developed under the military management in England during World War II. The original purpose of this research was to study strategic and tactical problems of air and land defense with objective effectiveness used in initiated material, uh, military resources against foreign enemies. And they go on to talk about how uh, they came across technologies that um, they had. Oh, in 1952, the grant, the grant period terminated and the high-level meeting of the elite was held to determine the next phase of the social operations research. The Harvard product, uh, project had been very fruitful, as is borne out by the publication of some of the results in 1953 suggesting the feasibility of economic engineering, studies of structure of the American economy. And uh, they talk about how it was engineered in the last half of the 1940s. The new quiet war machine stood, so to speak, in sparkling gold plated hardware on the showroom floor by 1954. So this document 
talks about a combination of irresistible attacks upon humanity and how they will control humanity. Politically, they talk about how they set up the uh, political system, right and left, so that we would feel um, our grievances were aired and our frustrations could uh, come out. But the bankers were behind everyone who was elected, and they laugh at us. They laugh at us. The very, very last, and I'll go to this right now because we'll come back to the document itself, but the very last statement in this document, it says, factor six, cattle. Those who will not use their brains are no better off than those who have no brains. And so this mindless school of je jellyfish, father, mother, son, and daughter become useful beasts of burden or trainers of the same. So what they say in this document is they will dole out poisonous foods. It's not what we need, but it's what we want. And those that decide to eat these foods will have the consequences of that. They tell us uh, how they set up all the social engineering, how they devise the family, how they crumble the family, how they set up the war machine, how they influence thinking uh, in the family unit to allow the family to give up their children to war for a rich man's fodder. It's, it's a document that discusses uh, the artificial womb. They believe that people need to feel protected and that the elites are going to serve as the womb for protection of the people. That they'll have a place to take cover and hide from the reality of life because we just are not capable of managing the reality of life. So they will set up um, that artificial womb. It says, the objective of these artificial wombs is to provide a stable environment for both stable and unstable activity, to provide a shelter for the evolutionary process of growth and maturity, survival, to provide security for freedom, and to provide defensive protection for offensive activity. And they, they say that from the time a person leaves its, mo mother's, its, its mother's womb, <laughs> in every effort, every, its every effort is directed towards building, maintaining, and withdrawing into artificial wombs. Various sorts of substitute protective devices or shells. So they set themselves up to protect us, to keep us crippled, to numb us down with foods so that our pineal gland is interfered with. We're never able to reach our higher consciousness. And right now, the massive fluoridation across the United States is to collapse the ability for us to think. They're shutting us down right now. They take your baby and make it Rosemary's baby. That's exactly right. Exactly right. It's very similar to The Matrix, which was based on a DARPA document. I mean, it's, it is similar, isn't it? There, it's, it's problem, reaction, solution, the same way they always operate. Um, so I guess the best thing to do is wake everyone up and hope that a grassroots movement can change it. Do you think revolution would be necessary at some point, or could it change without that? What do you think? Well, I think we need a revelation, not a revolution. A revolution would only bring in martial law, in, in the opinion of what we are looking at, would bring in martial law. Uh, it would also uh, allow people to be targeted with the weaponry that they cannot wait to roll out on us. You add the drones, you add the micro dust, you add, add in the beam weapons that they tell us they have. They also have a blast wave accelerator and when you look at the population of the United States, the majority of the population lives along the coastlines. And the blast wave accelerator was a uh, tidal wave uh, invention that the United States dreamt up with the Soviet Union back in the 40s. Actually, it was going to be used in World War II instead of the bombs, but they decided to use the bombs instead. And the blast wave accelerator um, exploits the methane deposits on the seabed and causes a fingerprintless, plumeless 
a tidal wave on low-lying areas around the perimeter of any country that right they just got your weaponized Gestapo meter that keeps track of every house and every movement and every bit of energy that you're already doing and can report back to whoever is observing. So we're virtually in a concentration camp right now. Yes, in the meantime, are. the food supplies are being reduced, as you're mentioning in your other interview, how the dams are being taken out and the food. I mean, it's so obvious that the federal government coming in and wanting your child, even at earlier and earlier ages, every place, everywhere, and it's based on the foundation of climate change, which you mentioned you might want to well, get into and that and your Iron Mountain. that's absolutely true. All the documents, uh, the Iron Mountain document, uh, even the NASA war document talks about uh, there are too many people using too much stuff and the earth cannot support this. And they've come up uh, with the fear-based uh, scientific fraudulent information that people are now accepting. They're rewriting history and they're rewriting science with the idea that uh, people are using too much uh, uh, resources, we have to reduce CO2 and reduce our greenhouse gas emissions. And that is flying through every city across the world right now. It's written into all local government uh, documents, and cities now are, uh, at, well, California, for example, with the um, CARB initiative, where we have to actually pay for the air we breathe and we're taxed uh, for the air. It's like the fiat money. We've accepted. Uh, false backed money, which they tell us in the Iron Document or in the Silent Weapons Document, one of the reasons that they send uh, our men and women off to war is to reduce the population because they have stolen from them. They've taken real labor service in exchange for illegitimate false fiat money. So they have to eliminate the creditors. That's another aspect of war is to reduce the creditors. But uh, it's all based on the false um, uh, pollution that is not false. They've created the pollution. When you look at the Iron Mountain document, you will see the methods in which they were going to create pollution. They even say that they will deforest us, and they're doing that with the chemtrail, the secret chemtrail or geoengineering program or weather modification. Actually, that program has multiple layers. Not only does it uh, increase weather events, we've just experienced some horrific events here in the United States with massive tornadoes that uh, just destroyed a number of cities uh, in Oklahoma. Uh, we're, we're being hit globally. They're hitting our food supply. It does reduce our food supply. It will increase the cost of our food. Uh, it's changing the pH in the soil, which will then uh, fit to the prescribed Monsanto mega corporation food takeover of the globe. That is the intention of Monsanto, is global food domination. They have the seeds. The seeds will uh, grow in the polluted soil that they are creating. This is all by design. So what do we do about this, you asked? We first must become educated. And I would uh, say that the quickest way for people to become educated is look at these very simple source documents. Look at the Quiet Weapons Silent War document. Look at the Iron Mountain document and the New World Order Exposed 1969. They're all on our website, stopthecrime.net. Of all the research we have done, if you just get those basic documents understood, if everyone understands the fraud, then we will be able to eliminate this. We don't have to go on with this fraud. We do not. And people keep saying, well, there's more of us than them. Well, that may be true. But sadly, now, there are technologies that are so... Um, unbelievable that people won't even realize what hit them. And that is the strategy of the future wars and the wars that we're facing in our country. But I would say everyone needs to look at the NASA document. You need to move from the illusion, the non-reality that you are living in. You need to move into a new reality formed by the, the truths 
that these documents convey. So that then from those realities, then you can look at solutions. You can't shoot from the hip and look for solutions if you have not learned who's doing this to us, how they're doing this to us, and the documents that tell us how they are doing this to us. Like the Truman Show, which was designed to create a false reality for entertainment, the false reality we have now is designed to kill us. This is, this is a war against the people. This is why that tabloid came out, prepare to die. And they're doing it in so many deliberate ways in which those documents show that it's been in the works for a long time. And you not only see the individuals, which can be kind of identified with the Bilderbergers, the Trilats, and Skull and Bones, they are in the saddle. They are the ones determining policy, the scientific advisor to the president of the John P. Holdren in, in charge of the chemtrails. We have <coughs> MITRE with the former head of the CIA directing all these branches of, of government. We've got guys like Leon Panetta, which is the head of the CIA in the Department of Defense, moving our armies over to NATO and moving without a constitution. This is a direct war against us, and we see people dying like flies now. And like you said, it doesn't have fingerprints on it because of the methods that they're using, but it's as real as people getting strokes and cancer and autism and, and Alzheimer's. It's so clear. Uh, I mean, the, 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 the stats, the mathematics prove the point. And so they have to know, people have to know what's going on and to strategize to fight it. And they can, because the only way they're getting away with this is by the lies. And if you, if you sort of come to the, the mass media, the three networks, and the two wire services, you, you're never going to get out of it. Well, it actually says in the document, in the NASA war document, that they will use uh, mass media propaganda. That is uh, prevalent. CNN syndrome, is that? Yeah, that's that one it? of the things that they call it. But they... They're literally going through this document. Oh, they're going to also use explosive dust opportunities. Um, they talk about uh, how, oh, the dust will infiltrate deeply into buried and other such targets. They're saying in here, too, if, if you move, they can see you and you're dead. So the technology, oh, sensors in everything. There is an amazing mission statement that I found on PSI um, technology out of the Carnegie Mellon Institute. And the mis mission statement stated that they were changing the global infrastructure to that of uh, computers and technology. And that would include our entire structure, not only utilities, but civil, uh, government uh, policies. And what is also very interesting, uh, we went to uh, Al Gore's recent book review. He wrote a book called The Future. And he talks about how uh, artificial intelligence is going to take over and that we're going to see changes within the United States that have not been seen in 500 years. And he talks about how um, uh, it's just not efficient to continue with humans. The same thing. These all tie in. They all tie in. We have a think tank that is plotting and scheming against humanity because they believe that uh, it's too frail. And they also talk about um, – uh, let me pause for a second here. Oh, they talk about the U.S. Brain Project, and it begun in the 90s. They say that it was funded by 16 organizations across five agencies. NIH, which of course is the National Health Institute, the Department of Defense, NASA, and the Department of Energy. And uh, they talk about how uh, they have over 10,000 individual presentations at annual meetings for the uh, Society for Neuroscience. And essentially, they have redesigned humanity. And there is a fascinating uh, life story of a, f a fourth generation clone called Michael Prince. And that is on our website under the NASA document link. And I urge everybody to listen to this, um, this uh, interview with Michael Prince. He was killed in 2011. 
and he is a fourth generation clone. The levels of technology, the length of time that they've had technologies are unbelievable. What they also say in the Iron Mountain documentary is that they will control the educational system, that uh, they will uh, replace the education system with computers. They're saying that in uh, the NASA document too. Everything will be telecommuting, teleshopping, teleentertainment, teletravel, teleeducation. This way they can rewrite history. Everything will be on Kindle, and it'll be very easy to change books, to change the language. Recently, I was listening to a weather report, and the reporter said, it will be sunny tomorrow. But I'm calling sunshine now a soft sunshine because the sun doesn't shine like it used to. I mean, that is what I'm saying. The reporter didn't say that. But the reporter now is saying a soft sunshine. They're rewriting our definition of what a sunny day is supposed to look like because we're under the constant vellum of this secret, non-existent, uh, atmospheric poisoning of our skies. So they're rewriting our vocabulary. They're rewriting everything about us. And they're keeping us so sick uh, from the fluoride, from the aspartame in the food, all of the dyes and chemicals on everything. I mean, even the receipts that we get from filling our cars with gas are poisonous. We shouldn't be touching them. And so we need to navigate. Um, I, I say that life on a daily basis is like trying to walk through a landmine field. And if you get to the other side at the end of the day, you've made good choices because they've certainly put and placed landmines in our lives. Yeah, it's hard to avoid, really, I mean. The impact that it's having on our lives, that we should be sitting here right now having this conversation because of what has been orchestrated against us. Our futures are being determined for us. Our life spans are being decided upon. It's fascinating information. Um, so the best way to get access to all this is StopTheCrime.net? StopTheCrime.net. It links to our other websites as well, which is uh, SmartMetersMurder.com. We have invaluable YouTube videos up on SmartMetersMurder.com. There's a series done by Barry, B-A-R-R-I-E, Trower, T-R-O-W-E-R, uh, who is a scientist out of the U.K., and uh, talks about the weaponization of frequencies as it relates specifically to the wireless, and in particular, the uh, vast deployment throughout America and other countries as well of the cell phone towers. They're erupting everywhere, and they're disguising them as trees. They're disguising them in church steeples. Even when you drive through the desert, they're disguised into yuccas, and that is a cell phone tower. They're also, this is very interesting, they're putting them in, in mobile oil signs in gas stations so you don't even see them. Now, when you look, if you're really aware of spotting cell phone towers, uh, my grandchildren can spot them a mile away. Uh, but you can go to shopping centers where they have landscaping and, and the uplights amongst the landscaping and you'll see many uplight standards that are disguised cell phone towers. And you don't think of it. You're just thinking that it's lights within the parking lot and they're actual cell phone towers. And they're in church steeples as well, church aren't steeples. they? Yeah. Yes, they are. And they're paying uh, schools to uh, put them on their campuses. Right now, uh, there's a newly discovered cancer cluster at uh, San Diego State University. And there have been... Uh, a number of students and faculty that have have gotten brain tumors mm. so we are in a takedown of frequencies admitted by this document we have the proof we have the military the agencies that admit to this we don't need to prove the deaths on the campuses near towers because it says towers will be used in this in on page 98 it says that towers will be used uh, to emit frequencies. 
So again, uh, this is their document. This is what they tell us on page 98. A typical scenario, takedown of the U.S. by 10 people and $10 million. Binary biologicals, imported vitamins and clothing, the food supply will be poisoned. Terror attacks with um, uh, vaccines and with um, viruses. Uh, they talk about uh, our railroads will be attacked. Selective anti-personnel with um, radiation frequencies, microwaves from the towers. The water supply will be contaminated uh, via intercontinental unmanned vehicles accompanied by serious psi war, and that's the CNN syndrome. So they're telling us here how easy it would be to take down the United States with these new technologies. We've got to expose this. Yeah, thanks so much for all this information, Deborah Tavares, and we will check out your website and try to make this go viral and get it out there. Thanks a lot. Thank you so much.